Occasionally, major manufacturers seem to recognize that we, the consumer, would like to modify our products that we purchase. One of these rare occasions seems to be the Korg Monotron Mini Analog Synthesizer. Similar to Gawkin's SX150 analog synth kit, the Monotron does produce some sweet analog sounds from a very compact bit of hardware. That's cool by itself, but there are three things that the hacker and me really love about this thing. Number one, internal connectors make it easy to disassemble and put it back together. Number two, and this is very cool, the PCB has all the major solder points I'd be interested in marked. And the third, and probably the coolest thing, is that they publish their schematics for it online. I mean, even if you don't buy one, you could learn how an analog synth works by looking at those, and that's awesome. The question remains, what can we actually hack this thing into doing? A number of synth DIY folks on the web have already answered that question. Beatnik has added a bunch of cool features, including MIDI control, and put it all in a custom enclosure, dubbing it the Monotron Plus Plus. Now I'd be happy just being able to control the major features from an outside voltage signal. 2CV of dinsync.info posted really simple instructions to do just that. 2CV's mod adds three inputs designed to accept control voltage, or CV, signals like those used by vintage analog synthesizers. One to gate or turn the output signal on or off. One to control the cutoff frequency of the monotron's low pass filter. And another one to control the pitch or frequency of the output signal. The 10K potentiometer allows for some fine tuning of the pitch, and that switch will let me send some of the pitch CV to the filter as well. Though the solder points on the PCB are quite a bit larger than normal SMD pads, they can still be a bit tricky to solder to. Using thinner wire around 26 gauge does help a bit. The enclosure is definitely tightly packed, so I'll send these wires out to a little breakout board with all the resistors and jacks. I could solder them directly to my breakout board, but I may want to make some changes down the road, so I'll use some female header pins instead. Now I'll just recreate the schematic on a bit of perf board. To test it all out, I'll use a couple of potentiometers wired up as voltage dividers to 3 volts and ground. And yep, they do seem to be working. So there's a ton of different ways I could control these inputs. Using light is always a fun option though. Hey, everybody loves photocells, right? I knew there was a reason I needed a strobe feature on my flashlight. So, fun stuff. Here's hoping we see more big name companies releasing hackable products like the Monotron here. I mean, if nothing else, they can see it as a good way to get free exposure. Someone 
might make a how-to web video about it.